In August 2021, a blockchain developer received a transaction of $1 million. That was a payment for a single job that took 5 hours of work. What was this job and why was the payment so high? That's what we will see in this video. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. The project that paid $1 million to this blockchain developer is SushiSwap. SushiSwap is one of the biggest decentralized exchange on Ethereum. Traders can buy and sell ERC20 tokens on Uniswap in a decentralized way through smart contracts. SushiSwap originally started as a fork of Uniswap in 2020. At the very beginning of SushiSwap, it was very similar to Uniswap. The core part of the exchange of SushiSwap uses the same exact smart contract as Uniswap V2. Uniswap was already a big project at that time and you could trust that their smart contract were safe. So if SushiSwap uses the same smart contract, it should be fine. From the beginning, the team and the community of SushiSwap seems more open to moving quickly and doing some experiments. This can be explained by the fact that SushiSwap has a team which is partly anonymous without any legal entity attached to it, whereas Uniswap has a public team with a company registered and VCs who support them. That's why beside the initial decentralized exchange, they started to work on other features. One of them was Miso. Miso is a launchpad for new tokens. It allows non-technical people to create tokens and distribute them to investors by using a visual interface. Apart from the visual interface, the system also uses custom smart contracts. These smart contracts were audited by three different smart contract auditing companies. That should give us a pretty good guarantee that everything was fine. But unfortunately, there was a problem to one of these smart contracts. I will explain this in more detail later, but first, let's move on to another part of the story. Sam Sizison is the lucky blockchain developer who got paid $1 million from SushiSwap. He is very active on crypto Twitter and talks a lot about smart contract security. I went to his LinkedIn profile to learn more about him and we can see that he worked six months as a security engineer at Trails of Bits. Trails of Bits is a famous smart contract audit company. After that, he started another job as a research partner at Paradigm. Paradigm is an investment fund for crypto based in San Francisco. Paradigm has invested in many crypto projects and is pretty high profile in the crypto investment community partly thanks to their research team which regularly publishes interesting studies about smart contract security. But why Sam CZ soon received $1 million from SushiSwap? Sam was just chatting on Telegram when he noticed a discussion between two people about the MISO feature of SushiSwap, their launchpad. We don't know what they were talking about exactly, but I guess they were probably debating whether or not there was a vulnerability in the contract. So this triggered the curiosity of Sam, who started to do some research on the smart contracts of SushiSwap. And that's when he found something very serious. When you launch your token, you can choose between two types of auctions, Dutch auctions and batch auctions. We are going to focus on the Dutch auction. How does it work? In the Dutch auction, the seller of the tokens sets an initial price. Once the auction starts, anybody can buy tokens at the initial price. As the time goes by, the price gradually decreases. Buyers can wait until the price reaches a level they are comfortable with and they only make their bid at that time. The auction continues until all the tokens have been sold. Once all the tokens have been sold, we check the last price of the auction and all the buyer will buy the tokens at this last price regardless of what was the price at which they made their bid. So if you really want to ensure that you will get enough allocation, you have to bid as early as possible. If you wait too much, the remaining token supply will be more limited and if you really wait too much, there won't be anything left. Sam, the developer of our story, started to inspect the Dutch auction spot contract of SushiSwap. At first, he didn't see nothing strange. And then he saw this Solidity library called Boring Batchable. Boring Batchable is a library that allows you to do batch calls. You pass it as arguments, all the details of all the functions that you want to call, and after, in a for loop, it executes all the nested calls. To do the nested calls, it uses the delegated call opcode, which forward the msg.value variable. This is a global variable that holds the amount of ether that was sent to the smart contract. This value will stay the same during all the execution of the transaction. And this is going to be a source of problem. Now let's go inside the Dutch auction smart contract. 
To place a bid in Ether, you can call the commit ETH function. This function will record your bid based on the value of msg.value. If you make a single call to commit ETH directly, there is no problem. But what if you use the batch function of the boring batchable library? The Dutch auction smart contract inherits from this library, so that means all functions of boring batchable are accessible in the Dutch auction contract, including the batch function. If you call commit ETH through the batch function, you can call commit is several times by reusing the same ETH for each call. MSG value will stay the same through the different calls. That means you will be able to buy a lot of tokens by only paying a fraction of the price. So that's really bad for token sellers. But it gets worse than this. There is a refund mechanism. After each auction, it's possible that there is some excess ether if there were some unsuccessful bids. What you could do is call commit is through the batch function even after all the tokens were sold and after it can trigger the refund mechanism. And you would get the refund based on all the bids you have made before, but remember, if you call the commit is function through the batch function, there will be more bids recorded compared to the actual is that you sent. For example, with one ether sent, you could record bids for 10 ether or more, which means you will get a refund for 10 ether even though you only sent one ether initially, which means you steal other people ether, and that's really terrible. After Sam found the bug, he reported it to the team of SushiSwap. SushiSwap realized the huge mistake they have done and with the help of Sam, they managed to avoid any loss. This bug could have resulted in a loss of $350 million for SushiSwap users. A huge accident was avoided and SushiSwap was very lucky. And that's because Sam is what we call a white hack hacker and not an actual hacker that steals money. A white hat hacker is a security specialist that tries to poke holes and find security vulnerabilities in smart contracts. When a white hat hacker finds a security vulnerability, he reports it to the team and generally gets paid a bounty. In the case of this bug, because it could have been such a catastrophe for SushiSwap, they decided to award Sam a huge bug bounty of $1 million. Not bad for just 5 hours of work. Of course, after this video, the first thing that comes to your mind is, can you do the same? Can you make $1 million in 5 hours as a blockchain developer? So even though this story is amazing, we have to be realistic. It's not every day that a blockchain developer make $1 million in 5 hours, but it still shows you the kind of value you have as a blockchain developer. Have you heard of any web developer or backend developer that make that kind of money so fast? No, it's only in blockchain. And especially if you specialize in smart contract security, it's where the salary are the highest for blockchain developers. It's like a niche in the niche. And if that's something that interests you, you can watch this video where I explain how you can become a smart contract auditor. I will see you there.